on the on the behalf of the Fresno Highland Recreation Area, uh, as president, serving uh, a very dedicated team that's unbelievable. I'd like to welcome everybody here and acknowledge those that are here. Uh, we got Bill Altoff, the supervisor of the park, is here, along with Jeff Francis, the lead ranger, and Bob Hoffman is here, a county commissioner guy, right? Or Highland yeah. County, you're a county guy. Um, sometimes uh, Greg Baroni will show up. Sometimes the Coals will show up. But maybe their schedule puts them someplace else, and I know some people have to move and go to different places. But this is our third Red Bud reveal. It's an intent for us to take the opportunity in springtime to share with you some of the things that we've accomplished in the last year. And we like to appreciate uh, the focus that we had and share with you that we kind of came together for the first time due to sharing Green's efforts to pull some people together in October of 07. About 60 people came together, and we ended up cleaning up the barn and the ivy and all the stuff in the fence. And from there, there was a decision to step forward and go and make a nonprofit corporation, which we achieved in March of 2008. We filed for the IRS federal 501c3 tax exempt status, and received that in June of 2009, so that we could receive donations of goods and funds and money, and definitely would accept all those hours of volunteerism for what we do. Our real purpose is to support our mission to rebuild, repair, and replace the original Haven Hill complex built in 1924 by Edsel and Eleanor Ford. They started out with 2,400 acres of land here in the highest point in Oakland County as their interest to make a, a nerve retreat and get away from the hassle of automotive uh, activities sometimes. Uh, but what was unfortunate was the untimely death of Edsel at age 49, 1943. By then, uh, they had been in the Grosse Point Shores Rock House, as I call it, the 60-room rock house, for several years. Almost uh, the two that they lived here to start to get that done, then they moved over there and used it for weekends or for guests that would come. When you come to visit out in this part of the country, that time, you could stay for three weeks or a month, and it was a normal visit. You know, your mother-in-law stayed with you from now on. Put her out and their, their retreat might work. <laughs> but what we ended up doing is uh, the action was timely uh, when a result of that death Eleanor decided three years later when the property, 2,400 acres, was valued at $1.8 million, $1946, and sold that to the Michigan Department of Conservation as the start of a park system in the state of Michigan. It may not be the first property purchase, but it definitely was in those early years. And she sold the entire 2,400 acres for $310,000, including the furnishings of the house. We have benefited from that sale because at the time of sale, they documented every room in the Haven Hill lot. All the bedrooms, each wall, uh, all the structures that were there, the carriage house, and we had some of those archive photos came through Bill uh, Altos files before they were sent up to the archives in, in the state of Michigan. And we've got the benefit in some cases of understanding that the one room with the governess, the small crib was William Clay. Ford's crib, and he's the owner of the Lions, and in his 80, late 80s right now. So the heritage that we've had here, we're trying to still undertake and make sure that we do that. Um, through the efforts of uh, Genevieve Gillette, uh, she was really a student of Jen Jensen. She was the first uh, female graduate of the Landscape Architecture School out of Michigan Agriculture College, now called Michigan State. But she worked for Jen Jensen in Chicago, and Jen Jensen actually did the landscaping layout here as well as the Ford House. And he encouraged her to come back and, and really push for a state park system here in Michigan. She did that. And the end result is that we do have a great, great system here in Michigan. And pure Michigan is really worth seeing. Many of the locations in our state park system are, are gems that just haven't been discovered. And this is one of them. We're trying to polish the rock in a lot of different cases. But when we pull the rock up, we find rotten wood and roots, everything that we don't expect. But we're finding it and trying to deal with it. Flora has taken on projects across the three major buildings that are under what we currently have as a lease. Uh, the gatehouse, the garage, the portico is all one structure. The original sheep barn, which is uh, was 225 feet long until on June 8, 2008, it collapsed due to the sheer wind. And that was a major, major blow to us a couple of years ago, but we moved forward in that area as well as the carriage house, which has the chauffeur's quarters up the hill. We do uh, try to review and show and share the lodge footprint, as we call it, for anyone that could get to the hill. We apologize due to the weather. We are not taking anybody up the hill. We're, we don't have access that we want at this point in the carriage house. 
and you're just going to get wet out in the open at the top. So we like to let you know that we have worked very hard down here in a lot of different areas. Some of them have been the trees that were trimmed here to protect that bench over here provided by ITC. When the big tree over here to my right was a possible threat for that bench, it started the opportunity to clear trees. So Bruce Maxim came in and made some arrangements and did some very significant cuts up the hill this past year. Uh, one of the major elements that we did do is that we had help from the Ford model volunteer team. Ford employees are supposed to provide eight hours of service a year, uh, twice, and we've had some of those come out. Some of those have been helpful, particularly the process engineers that have made the layout for our security gate. That security gate is really in the original design from our Derrick in its 1924s chain link fence, basically what it is. Because when you get over to it and look at it, there's 13 different links. And the center post is seven feet, two and a half inches tall, and it's pretty uh, controlling to keep people out. I'm not sure what the deer think about it when we get it all done, but they might have a different opinion. We were pleased that last year ITC decided to uh, give uh, our donation to us again in the form of money directly to us. That really helped us in the process of being efficient with our funding, sometimes in trying to follow what uh, they had provided in the past through Bill Altoff, we had bookkeeping. Uh, money's left over, and, and that became a real challenge to us. But last May, unfortunately, we were saddened by the loss of a great friend. Harvey Headland had uh, been a member of our team. He's also the late, late Historical Society and a very active participant in the late, late Senior Center. And he used to always come out for work days. Uh, he wanted to make sure, we wanted to make sure he had something to eat. But he always had a story. He was a tech-savvy guy, he had the latest gadget, an iPad, whatever it would be, he'd share that with you. And, but he'd also bring a newspaper article on folded yellow paper that might tell you about road races up Haven Hill with sports cars. That lasted for a very short time until there was an accident, apparently, in 52. So it didn't last very long, so it was a mini uh, Pikes Peak climb that maybe lasted a week or something. Unfortunately, uh, the friends of Highland Rec stood around hard at his uh, funeral and his placement. But what we do remember about Harvey is what is written on his headstone. Harvey appreciated technology, history, nature, and his friends. And we appreciate Harvey. May he rest in peace. Not too long after that, another friend of ours, uh, Brenda Casima, passed away suddenly at age 49, and she was the friend that supported us with her journalism, with articles, with grant writing, particularly through the DNR, trying to get that covered for us as we focused asbestos only to learn when we got to the national level, they didn't accept that. But those losses of those two friends are noted, and we appreciate their involvement and support as we move forward. Members of the uh, team basically have worked hard to uh, take on a grant that was here from the D Detroit DTE Tree Foundation. We applied in January when there was a major change to the bicycle path. Next year we hope we'll have a bicycle path that will go right through the Florida That project we know has been approved, but it's in the bid process. Last year it had some financial over concerns due to bids that were higher than the money available. But we were then asked to apply for a DTE grant and we were able to plant around us seven um, thornless hawthorns, we had uh, six elms, and then what we really are challenged with, you can't see around the corner, are black cherry substitutes called spring flurries, but all of those came from Ray Wiggins out of London, Michigan, under a grant we were able to get a thousand dollars back for our expenses, but I'm telling you that in a week, all this rain is going to make that stuff bloom out, so we want you to come back and make sure that it happens. Our real focus down at the barn this past year has been the roof, the walls. We started walls in February when we found that the rafters and studs were just rotted out everywhere. And then we replaced the roof sheeting on both east and west side of the first floor, or first level, and then the second level we started the same thing. We still have more to do, but we were able to get through the winter with synthetic tar paper across our sheeting so that we can use that as an underlayment as we go forward. In October and November, we really started to concentrate here in the gatehouse garage to install insulation behind covered mesh that we blew in and eventually then had some master craftsmen come in in December and did a fantastic job, we think, with all the plaster work that was done in there. They did a scratch coat, 
they did a cover coat on Saturday, and then they came in on Sunday and did that whitewash coat in a swirl pattern from the original 1924 design. And one of the things that is really important is that we encourage you to go inside today if you haven't been in there, use our brand new universally accessible ramp that was created almost yesterday overnight. Uh, it really is an effort for an awful lot of people, and I appreciate those that were here late at night trying to finish that off. We uh, also have some opportunity later on to make this conversation ring uh, attached to the pathway that's going to come, but there's some artwork that we wanted you to see. It's covered in plastic, hopefully it'll help it out, but they really are to the efforts of our secretary on the board. Jay Fitzgerald has done some fantastic photography work if you haven't seen it, but also read his bio. He's, he does great things, and we appreciate his photography. Give him a hand. Some of the events that we held last year, last year we on St. Patrick's Day, because I'm the cook, I usually supply food for the teams that are out here. I brought some corned beef and cabbage out where they did a one-on-one -on -one windows class. And uh, we had an opportunity to understand how to get the paint off the windows and replace the glazing and do all that kind of stuff. But I think it was about 12 students that worked out pretty well and there was no corned beef left at the end of the day. Uh, that was really through the support of Ron Campbell and the uh, Oakland County uh, Planning and Economic Development team, and they really helped us out for that. Because we do have a lot of windows. We actually took windows out of Peerage House as well down here. Uh, we were in the July 4th parade again in period dress, and uh, even included little Jack Fitzgerald uh, in his togs as a baseball guy. We're glad to have everybody involved. But our strong highlight of the year is our Haven Hill Festival every August, and we've been able to do that. This year we were quite thrilled to have the Lottie Da Old Time Baseball team here from the Henry Ford Greenfield Village. We asked two years ago, their schedule was too busy, when it opened up last year that they said, yeah, we're going to come out and play you guys as a visiting team. We were more surprised but more pleased that they did that until they came out and showed us how good they were. <laughs> now, I will say that I believe we ended up with about 27 runs against us, but to our own credit, we actually scored 11 runs against them. 16. Or 16, whatever it was. 16. It was a double-digit number and the first time that any team had scored in double digits against the Lottie Dawes in the history of that team. Whether they're coming back again, I don't know, but I was the umpire and I learned an awful lot of things from them as a team on how active a new ball can be versus one that's been beat around and who gets to play with it first. So that was important to me. We actually are ready in anticipating the path that comes through here next year or later this year is that this will probably make a very dramatic change for the park and all the activity up in this area. It's important to understand we have no water here that functions. The well was capped in 91. We do have power, but we do not have access to that building. We do have an application in under a brand new program called Partnership Match Agreement, and it comes from your participation and the recreational passport. If you put that recreational passport, now $11 per year, on your license tab, about 660000 of that was made available this year for projects that we could submit. And we have to match 50-50, but if we can move forward to get asbestos out of that house sometime between September of this year or March of next year, we'll move much more forward into that building as we have here in the garage. So we'd like to look forward to that occurring. And we also appreciate everyone's uh, attendance today. But more importantly, I again want to thank the Flora team for volunteering more than 3,018 hours of time to get us where we are this year, and we appreciate that very much. Let's give a hand to the Flora team. Thank you for coming. We like to share a one of our rulers. It says on here, I helped rescue the Etzel Ford barn. Would you help too? And it gives the dimensions of the original barn before it collapsed. So make sure you get a... a ruler for me before you depart today, but I encourage you to use our universally accessible ramp and go inside and take pictures, take pictures uh, if you would like to, but see the pictures that are on the wall. Thank you very much for coming, folks.